Hello humans, welcome to the less tracked show on the internet. Today I will try to use visual effects to create a shot set in the world of Dune, using only free and open source tools. If you're new, here on this channel we do artistic challenges to create visual art and music using all kind of tools, mostly open source software, to demonstrate that what really matters is your approach. In particular, on this show we explore animation and visual effects. So if you want to see me miserably failing in trying to replicate one of the most visually stunning movies of this year, keep watching. I'm Artificial Marvin and you're watching The Cut. By the way, this video, like the upcoming two ones, was supposed to come out in November, but between the pandemic, my work and various other commitments, I couldn't stay on schedule. Oh, and in the meantime, in January, one of my artwork that I produce daily or almost on Instagram was exposed for a week in downtown Tokyo on 85 screens in the streets of Shibuya for a cool exhibition made by New Media Heart and Neo Shibuya TV. It was a very cool experience, but you'll see in the next video that will be a summary of my November. By the way, if you don't, follow me on Instagram. But let's get back on the video. So, I just saw the movie Dune, and I was wondering if I could create a shot placed in that fantasy world using just free resources found on the internet and Natron, which is an open source compositor for visual effects, based on the industry standard Nuke. I never use Natron for such a massive shot, so I think it would be an interesting challenge for me. Obviously, I don't have access to all the 3D models, animation and clips used in the movie, so my goal is to get a decent shot using images and videos found on the internet and trying to composite them as good as I can. I'm already feeling that it's a horrible idea, but hey, let's face it, all of my ideas are horrible, so why bother? First, as usual, I need to do some research to get a good understanding of what I need and how I'll approach this challenge. And this is also an opportunity to get a better understanding of how the film's production made such design choices or how they choose to address certain issues and steal their secrets. I think I overestimated the material I would find on the internet. I couldn't find no FX back down, no green screen clips to use in my shot, and even the images I found on the internet were useless. They were pretty much just illustration, and I need to compose a realistic shot. I'm already thinking of quitting the challenge. So after some minutes of desperation, I decided to face this challenge no matter what. After all, I have a secret weapon to unleash. The power of the internet. Combined with a bit of experience. Let's begin. The first thing I will need for sure is some footage of some sort of desertic landscape. For this task, I will use just free asset with a C0 license. That would allow me to use the footage in my project without any limitation, using websites such as Pexels and Pixabay. and I found some very nice desert footage. After that, I tried to replace the sky in the clip I chose, cause it seemed a bit boring to me, but in the end I noticed that the sun was placed in the wrong position, so I decided to leave the sky as it is. And already after the first 10 minutes using Natron, I had the first glitches in the compositor. Let's hope not to have other problems like this in the future. The second thing I want to try is to search on the internet for some usable 3D models. My new plan is to track the camera in the clip to place some 3D models in the scene, and then composite them all together in Natron. The 
3D models I found are not exactly what I expected. Many of them are in low resolution, and especially the Worm and the Fremen were very cartoony in their proportions and textures. In any case, I couldn't find better. And as for the Fremen, in the scene he should appear only from behind as a silhouette, so you shouldn't notice his distorted proportions. I could do the tracking in Natron, but I prefer to use Blender, because Natron cannot use 3D. Well, tracking a couple of dunes turned out to be really difficult. There wasn't much I could track, so I did the best I could using the few pebbles emerging out of the sand. As a result, the object closer to the camera seemed to follow the tracking very badly, while those a little further away seemed to give no problem. For the moment, I don't intend to worry about this detail, since I will mostly place my 3D models away from the camera. After that, I made a quick sketch on my scene, which came out really horrible, where I tried to place the various models within the shot. At the end, the important thing is to make the idea, right? It is time to start working on my 3D models. The work I need to do on the 3D models is to recreate the material in Blender and try to animate them as best as I can, so they don't look like static figures. I started by setting up the spaceship, and luckily it already had textures included for the materials, and an animation in which it lifts up in flight. But as soon as I tried to place it near the camera in the scene, I realized that the error in tracking was not so negligible. Whatever. I'll deal with it later. I placed the ship in the background, and after that, I used it to try to find the right position of the sun and the right lighting in the scene, so that the highlights and the shadows could remain consistent in the 3D models and in the clip. After that, I moved to the Ornithopter model. Unfortunately, this one had no associated material or animation, so I had to recreate them from scratch. In addition, I also had to edit the model to separate the wings from the body in order to animate them more easily. And I did the exact same thing on the second Ornithopter model. This one, however, already had convincing materials and better geometry, so all I had to do was to create an animation. I chose to use two different copter models to give some variety to the scene, and this one was the closest to the one in the movie, so I planned to place it in the foreground. To avoid the sense of static, I decided to make the wings move constantly and slowly, and every now and then vibrate some wings a little faster, as if it were a living being trying to stretch. And again, once I placed the model in the scene, I could really appreciate how bad the tracking was. To be consistent with the proportion of the helicopter, I placed the model of the Fremen immediately after scaling it, and I placed also the model of the wind trap. But now the scene began to seem a little too crowded, so I tried to reposition the models to find a more balanced layout. After that, I moved on to the big one. The worm is certainly not as detailed or realistic as the one in the movie, but I tried to make it work for me. The topology of this model was a big mess, but I decided to try animating it anyway. And I know it didn't come out the most realistic animation out there, but I don't have all the time in the world to finish this video. It is time to make the worm spit out some sand, and yes, it is not the most accurate physics simulation out there, but I think it will do its job. In the meantime, I also made a cloth simulation to create a fluttering cloak behind the Fremen that will mask a little bit its cartoony proportions. And now it's time to compose it all together. And let me just say that Natron gave me a hard time the entire time I was using it. It would always come up with either some glitches, bug or directly crash. The very first problem I had was using cryptomat masks. For some reason, I could not get a clean mask to isolate every single element in the scene. So I had to take the hard way 
and cut by hand each element for each frame using the rotoscoping tool. But that's not all. The rotoscoping tool was really messed up and it gave me a hard time in every possible way. The program would crash. It wouldn't save mask animations or would save them in random positions. And often it was even impossible to draw a mask as soon as the tool was loaded. Because of this little problem, I had to redo the rotoscoping of the object in the scene more or less a dozen times. And this for sure did not help the quality of my final work. It was really a nightmare. I have to say though, in Natron's defense, that I tried to re-import the scene in Blender to use his compositor. But even here, the cryptomat masks work badly. So in the end, I think this is Blender's fault. To solve the problem of the bad scene tracking in a short amount of time, I decided to use a still frame from the footage and create a sense of motion by simulating a shaking camera, as if it were a shot taken on location. You know, I'm lazy. So, this is the final result. And yes, it's not the best VFX on the world, but considering all the problems I had finding videos and images, that the 3D models were not exactly realistic, that I had to redo the animation of all the assets, and considering all the problems that Natron gave me with its bugs, glitches and crashes, I think the end result is decent enough. By the way, stay tuned if you want to see how I did the soundtrack and the sound effects for this clip, because I'll show it on the next episode of The Beeping. What do you think? If you have any comments or suggestions, please write it in the section down below. I once say to watch. It was time consuming, I didn't go back for seconds. It's better to love a short girl than not at all. How do angels greet each other? Halo. I asked my wife to dress up as a nurse tonight to fulfill my fantasy that we have health care. If you like this video, please give me a like, subscribe to this channel, and hit the bell button. Until the next challenge! As always, thank you for watching, bye humans! In this video I did a horrible job in tracking and rotoscoping, so if you want to see something where I didn't forget to switch on my brain, you should watch this video.